Hey everybody, it's Peter from peterstestprep.com and uh, today we're going to look at sequences, learn everything you need to know for the ACT. This is actually part one of a two-part video series. Part one covers everything that everybody should know. Uh, even if you are advanced in math, you may want to take a look, at least look at the worksheets and make sure you know everything that's on there uh, for this video because uh, there are some things on here that you might not know, uh, but it's stuff that everybody should know. And then part two is advanced material. If you're looking to get into the high 20s or 30 or into the 30s, you want to know everything that's in part two. As with all of my videos, there's a worksheet that accompanies the video. The link to the worksheet, you can find it in the description below the video and download it, print it out, and follow along with the video. And when I say to stop the video and do the problems, please do so and then we'll go over them. And that's the best way to learn the material. All right, guys, if you're all ready, we'll begin sequences part one. We're going to start by listing the two types of sequences that everybody should know. What is a sequence? A sequence is a list of numbers connected by a rule which allows you to predict successive terms. There are two types of sequences whose names you should know. First, arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the same number is always added to each term. Examples A and B. In A, look at those numbers 5, 7, 9, 11. Can you predict what's going to come next? Of course, 13, 15, you're going to add 2. In B, we have 8, 5, 2, negative 1. Now it looks like we're subtracting 3, but take a look here. It says, while it is usually convenient to think of an arithmetic sequence as one in which you always, uh, in which you add or subtract the same number, technically, in an arithmetic sequence, you only add a number, which is called the difference in an arithmetic sequence. So in example A above, we're always adding two. So this number called the difference is two. In example B, we're always adding negative three. So the difference is negative three. It's the number that you always add. The sequences below that in the bottom left represent geometric sequences. A geometric sequence is a sequence in which the same number is always multiplied to each term. In part C, 3, 6, 12, 24, and you can see we're always multiplying by 2. D, 8, 4, 2, 1, a half. Now it looks like we're dividing by 2 here, and we have a similar situation. While it is usually convenient to think of a geometric sequence as one in which you multiply or divide by the same number, technically you only multiply a number called the ratio in a geometric sequence. So an example C above, we're always multiplying by 2. So that number, the ratio, represented by r, is equal to 2. And in d, sequence d, we're always multiplying by a half. The ratio then here is a half. Let's take a look at the uh, first problem on the top right here, 1a. In each of the following sequences, identify the sequence as either an arithmetic or geometric sequence and identify what is the difference if it's arithmetic or the ratio if it's geometric. So here's the pattern that we're going to do. In I, we're adding 4. So we're going to just put a capital A there for arithmetic and D equals 4. Let's have you pause the video. You'll see a little blue screen that tells you what problems to do, but I'm going to just have you do lowercase ii, iii, and i4. Again, stop the video and uh, resume when you're done and we'll go over the questions. In II, we are apparently dividing by two. That would make it geometric, but remember we never divide with a geometric sequence. We only multiply by a number. We're gonna multiply by a half, so the ratio is one half. In III, we're subtracting three apparently, that makes it an arithmetic sequence, but we're not really subtracting, we're just sub, uh, adding a negative three. So our difference is minus three. And then in IV, oh, that's an interesting one. Well, what we're doing here is actually multiplying by negative two. This is actually a special favorite of the ACT. They really like this idea of multiplying by number and then you're flipping back and forth between positive and negative numbers. So we're multiplying by negative two each time, that means it's geometric which means that we have a ratio and the ratio is negative two. That's what we're multiplying by. All right, 
let's have you do questions one, uh, actually just one B, one B only, and then come on back. In 1b, they give us the fourth term of an arithmetic sequence and the eighth term and ask us to find the difference. So this is a core skill on a sequence question, is finding the difference when they give you two of the numbers. Now, what you should always do is write down a little line. Each one represents a term in the sequence. And underneath it, what we're going to do is put the term number. So the fourth term it is 20 and the eighth term is 25. So this is where we have a visual representation of what's going on here. How do we find the difference? Well, there's some number that if we add it each time from the 20th term, which is the uh, 20, which is the fourth term to the eighth term, 25, it'll get us from 20 to 25. Well, there's a nice little formula. You can find the difference by taking the total distance. That is to say from 20 to 25. So that's equal to five. And then we're going to divide it by the number of steps it takes to get from the fourth term to the eighth term. So the number of steps means one step, two steps, three steps, four steps. So the total distance divided by the number of steps. So that's five over four. Our difference is 1.25. And that's a good little formula to know. And if we add 1.25, we can fill in these numbers. 21.25, 22.5, 23.75, and then we get 25. All right, let's take a look at some issues with geometric sequences. Why don't you try questions 1C and 1D? Please stop the videotape. In 1C, we're given the seventh term and the eighth term. So the seventh term is 40 and the eighth term is 45, and we're told it's geometric. So we're multiplying. 40 by something to get 45. Notice I don't have to write out every single term. I don't have to write out a space for terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Just the ones that I need, just the ones we're working with. How do you find the ratio? Really easy. We have another nice little formula. You take any term that you know and you divide it by the previous term. We have a nice little formula. Just take any term and divide it by the previous term. So the ratio will be found by dividing 45 by 40. And we get 1.125. That is our ratio. That's if you have to calculate it. In 1D, they give us the second term, which is 5, and the fifth term, which is minus 40. So I'm going to put a little line in for the other terms. So the third fourth and fifth term, and the fifth term is minus 40. In this situation, when you, you don't have two numbers next to each other, you can guess very, very easily what the ratio is going to be. It's not going to be anything difficult. Here, you can probably just guess it's going to be minus 2, that the ratio, the number we're going to multiply is minus 2. So 5 minus 10, 20, minus 40 and the signs being different the 5 and the negative 40 tells you that the ratio the number you're going to be mul multiplying by is negative 2. Now the question here asks us to find the sixth term once we know the ratio minus 40 times minus 2 gives us 80 and there's our answer. I want you to go to the next page now and try 1E, 1F, and 1G. Try all three of those, so stop the video, and we'll come back and go over that. In 1E, we get the fifth term and the seventh term. So the fifth term is 10, the seventh term is 13. I leave a space for the sixth term, and again, as always, Let's put a little line for everybody. Find the ninth term, so I go up to the ninth term. So in order to predict the ninth term, I need to know the difference, D. So using our formula from before, the total distance from 10 to 13 is three units. That's gonna be over two steps. So D is 1.5, so I just add. 13 plus 1.5 is 14.5, and then 
I add 1.5 to that and I get the ninth term. The next one, 1f, is a little bit more of an advanced problem. The fourth term is 10, and they give us the eighth term. So I write in a space for 5 and 6 and 7, and the eighth term is there. Oop, a little sloppy. Eighth term is 17. And now we want to predict the value of the hundredth term. So we're going to have to use some logic here, some common sense. That's why this is a little advanced. Well, we first need the difference. So D, again, the total distance is 7 from 10 to 17. It's over four steps. So D is 1.75. How can we predict the 100th term? Well, we know the eighth term is 17. And to get to the hundredth term, that's going to be 92 steps. So we're just going to add 1.75 92 times. Okay, it's an interesting problem and it really gives us some insight on how these types of problems work and how an arithmetic sequence works and how you can jump around your sequence if you know the number of steps that you're dealing with. Finally, the word problem 1G, Rudolph the runner runs 40 yards forward, then returns to her starting point, then she runs 60 yards forward and comes back, then 90, then 135. Question I, does the pattern of numbers suggest an arithmetic or geometric sequence? 40, 60, 90, 135. That is indeed geometric. We're obviously not adding the same number. The difference is 20. Well, between the first two numbers, right? And then we're adding 30. Well, it's 20 and 30. And then 45, it's not arithmetic because we're not adding the same thing. If arithmetic, what is the difference? If geometric, what is the ratio? Well, it's geometric. So therefore, how do we find the ratio? And you take any number and divide it by the number before it, the previous number, and we get 1.5. And you can pick any of these numbers, 135 over 90, 90 over 60, we'll get 1.5. Finally, part three, predict how many yards forward Rudolph will run if she runs forward a fifth time. Well, we take her fourth distance, which is 135, multiply it by 1.5, and we will get 202.5 yards. Heading to part two now, the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. It's just a list of numbers that, are, that, come, that constitute or comprise an arithmetic sequence. And it's a fixed list of numbers and you wanna find the sum. There's a little formula. The sum of an arithmetic sequence, a finite arithmetic sequence, you add the first and last numbers and divide it by two and multiply by the number of terms. All right, real simple. Let's have you go ahead and do 2a, 2b, and 2c. Stop the video. Find the sum of the first 20 positive integers. That's question 2a. All right, let's apply the formula. The first is one the last is 20 and divide it by two. How many terms are there? How many integers are there from one to 20? 20 of them, of course. So when you multiply that together, I get 210. In 2b, find the sum of all the integers from 35 to 65 inclusive. Well, that means we're including 35 and 65. So again, the formula, the sum is equal to the first plus the last divided by two, that's easy. How many numbers are there? How many terms are there if you count from 35 to 65? It's not 30, it's 31. 30 is the number of steps to go from 35 to 65. You have to add one to the difference, right? You subtract them and add one in order to get the number of terms. So in other words, the total number of terms from one term to another inclusive is equal to the difference between the two numbers plus one. And this is really for consecutive integers, right? consecutive integers. So from 35 to 65, you subtract 65 minus 35 is 30. 
over 2 is 15, and times 31 gives us a sum of 1550. Finally, in 2C, Allie puts $5 in the bank in January, and then she's going to put money into the bank every month after that for the rest of the year, and each month she puts in $5 more than she did the previous month. How much money will she have in her account? And it says to use this formula. So we start writing down the numbers, well, 5, 10 in February, 15 in March. And we know there's 12 months, so if we just count out 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So in December, she will put in $60. What is the sum? First plus last divided by 2 times the number of months, which is 12, the number of um, times that she puts money into her account. And she will have a grand total of $390. All right, let's go to page 3. Sequences along with means and medians. Um, if you have seen the tapes, the videos on averages, you'll have run across this. If you have not, then you'll be seeing this for the first time. So look at question 3a. In the finite arithmetic sequence below, which is larger, the mean or the median? So we will ask you to go ahead and calculate the mean, calculate the median. The mean, of course, is the average. And let's see which one's bigger. Stop the video. The median is 4. The mean is 4. For any finite arithmetic sequence, the mean and the median are always equal. They like to ask this. It's a strange little question. Well, that's the end of part one of sequences. If you're looking to score, as we said earlier, in the high 20s or 30 or higher than 30, then you definitely want to make sure you know everything that's in part two of sequences. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. And let's hold, head over to page three. Blah, 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 blah.